There's no shortage of options when it comes to USB microphones, but finding a reliable, great sounding option at an affordable price does make things a little trickier. The Profile is Sennheiser's very first USB microphone, which is pretty interesting from a company that's been creating microphones since 1945. So let's take some time to profile the Profile. Now first and foremost, this video is sponsored by Sennheiser, which means it's not a full review, but I am really excited to explore this microphone. I've used Sennheiser gear for many years, and as you might know, my main boom microphone for a long time now has been the Sennheiser MKH-50. You're not hearing that now. Well, actually, right now you're hearing the MKH-50, but now you're hearing the profile here, and I wanna make sure to record this whole video using the profile so you can see how this mic sounds. You can understand its sound, profile. And on top of that, as part of this sponsorship, I've also been able to work directly with Sennheiser to donate more than 100 of these microphones to educational programs and individuals all around the world, including public school media programs in California, Pennsylvania, and Scotland. And we'll talk about that more later on in this video. So for now, let's talk about the microphone itself. So from a company like Sennheiser that's been creating microphones for so long, the idea of them approaching something new like USB microphones was really interesting to me. And I should actually clarify that there have been USB versions of a few other Sennheiser microphones in the past, but they have long since been discontinued. And the Profile is the first ever completely Sennheiser developed USB microphone that includes the capsule, the pre amps, everything inside and out. There are two different configurations you can get. Both come with the exact same microphone. One of them is the streaming set. That's the one I have right here. And that basically comes with this boom arm. And the other one is the regular microphone set that comes with a tabletop stand. The profile mic itself with the small tabletop stand retails for $129. And the streaming set with this boom arm retails for $199. The good news is whichever configuration you choose, you'll be able to set it up and use it right out of the box without needing anything else. And I'm actually really surprised by this boom arm. It's very, very small, but it's really, really sturdy. Once you move it and position it, it just sort of stays there. There are no tension knobs or anything to adjust. So the tension is pretty firm. And so however you position it, the microphone just stays there. And there is a little channel to route your USB cable through as well. So even though it's small and lightweight, this is still a really sturdy, really nice boom arm that I'm actually really impressed by. It's also, as you can kind of see here, easy to turn the mic sideways because by default you do that. But this arm makes it very easy to turn the mic sideways and then just kind of lock it into position here, which is really important to me because I often use a boom arm that's coming from the side and very few of them make it easy to position a microphone like this. And speaking of the microphone, it is super well built. As you'd expect, the entire housing is made out of metal and it's just super sturdy. I think the size is really nice too. It's not so small that it almost becomes like obnoxiously tiny where it's hard to position properly, but it's also not so big that it's going to be in the way. It's like a really nice compact size that I think will work well on a lot of desk setups. And there is an option to pivot the microphone in the yoke if you need to adjust it and fine tune things just a little bit. It does have a USB-C connection and comes with a pretty long USB-C cable that's running all the way from this end of my desk all the way over there to my computer right now. And as a USB microphone, this can work on Macs, on PCs, iPads, Android, basically any device that has a USB-C input. And on top of that USB-C port, you do have a 3.5 millimeter headphone output, which is what I'm using right now to monitor my audio with zero latency. Always a very important thing if you try with a USB microphone to run your audio out of your computer, there's often a little bit of latency. So it's very important to have a direct monitoring source. And because of that, this can immediately be selected not only as an input, but also as an output for your computer as soon as it is connected. And on the front of the microphone, there are physical controls that include three dials and a button. And actually, I think I glossed over that a little too much. There are physical controls for everything, which is hugely important and a really big deal to me. For some reason, it seems like a lot of microphones leave one or two of these out in favor of using like an app or something on your computer to control them. But there is absolutely no app that goes with the profile microphone. It is all just a complete standalone unit. And as a result of that, that means you have really nice physical controls just facing you at all times. And as I just mentioned, that really is kind of the whole point with this microphone. It's not to connect with some other larger ecosystem of an application and software, but to just plug and play, to set it and forget it and get amazing audio without having to really do anything else besides plug in the microphone. The mute button works as you'd expect. You can press it to mute and it is a soft touch. So if I press it right now, and then when I unpress it, you can hear me again, but if you notice there wasn't any sort of pop or disconnect when I pressed the button itself. So if I press and when I press the button again, then I fade back in. It almost does seem like there's like a micro 
transition that sort of fades things out really quickly to avoid having a pop or some kind of distracting noise in your audio. The button itself is also a soft press, so that means the sound of the button doesn't get picked up on the microphone, and it illuminates the mute button and the gain dial bright red when it's muted, so there's really no chance of you talking into the microphone and thinking it's unmuted when it's actually on mute. Right below that is a physical gain dial. This is probably the dial that's most often missing from USB microphones, and this just lets you control the gain right here. I can turn this all the way down, and now I'm really quiet, and I can also turn it up really, really loud. Oh my gosh, this is way too loud. I usually start by keeping the gain dial at about the 11 o'clock position and then adjusting it up or down from there. And right below the gain knob is a mix knob that controls how much of the microphone versus the USB computer audio that you're hearing. So if you turn this all the way to the microphone, you're not going to hear anything from the computer or the sound source. You're just going to hear what's happening in the microphone. If you turn this all the way to the computer side, you're only going to hear your USB audio and you're not going to hear anything from the microphone. So that's a great option if you're somebody who doesn't want to hear yourself while you're using the microphone. Personally, I usually keep that somewhere right in the middle because I do like a mix of both sources. And right below that, you do have your headphone volume knob so you can adjust the level that you're hearing in your headphones. And both of those knobs, the mix and the headphone volume have absolutely no impact on anything that anybody else hears. And finally, one really big deal about this microphone, I think is the capsule inside. As hopefully you've been able to hear by now, it's a really great sounding capsule. And while the microphone itself is new and while Sennheiser is new to USB microphones, they are not new to making great sounding microphone capsules. So the capsule itself is the same German made quality that you would come to expect from basically any Sennheiser microphone. And so that means that the profile microphone is kind of this really cool mix of new and old, which is something you can file into my list of pros. All right, as I've gotten older, I've noticed that a lot of my favorite things in the world are tools that are just simple and classic and reliable. My favorite type of guitar is the Fender Telecaster, which has been around since the 1950s and just has a rock solid reputation of being a, a rockin' solid guitar. Similarly, my favorite bass is the Fender Precision Bass, which has also been around since the 1950s. And despite the fact that it does not have all the bells and whistles and the most complicated electronics and everything inside of it, this has been the most commonly recorded bass on planet Earth since it was invented. It does the thing it's supposed to do exceptionally well, and there's really not much more that you could ask for. So with that in mind, I think that putting the profile microphone in the same category as something like that is a pretty big compliment, and it's also what made me interested in this microphone in the first place when Sennheiser first told me about it. As fun as it can be to have high-tech features and advanced stuff and software applications to handle everything, sometimes you just want something that is straight to the point and effective. Now when it comes to accessories, there are lots of standard generic windscreens and pop filters that can fit on the profile if you want to tame those plosives, but as you've been hearing throughout most of this video, you really don't need anything like that. It has a pretty good job. The profile is pretty good at rejecting plosives. Peter Piper pitched a podcast, and that's me speaking directly into the microphone at a pretty close distance. If I were to angle the microphone off to the side, then Peter Piper pitched a podcast. There's really nothing I can do. Peter Piper pi pa 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 pickles picture perfect profile profundity. It's very hard to get any plosives if you have the microphone not angled at your mouth at all. But even speaking directly into the microphone, I haven't had any issues with plosives at all. So along those lines, even though this is not a handheld mic, we should look at how the profile handles handling noise. And if that causes a bunch of unwanted noise, I gotta say, I was actually really impressed at how good it is at rejecting handling noise. If I just grab the microphone right now and move it all over the place, you might notice the volume is changing because it's getting closer and further away from me, but there is like no handling noise. If I move it on the arm, the arm does a pretty good job here. The microphone itself, of course, if I tap it, like it does a, even that does a good job. The yoke really does absorb sound pretty well. If I tap the mic itself, of course you can hear that, but if I grab it and move it and adjust things while I'm recording, you can't hear that at all. And that's that's pretty impressive. Here's what it sounds like on the arm. If I'm, you know, tapping the table, if I grab my keyboard here and I start furiously leaving amazing comments about this video, positive comments about this video, this is what that sounds like. So it does a pretty darn good job at rejecting handling noise, which is something I was kind of surprised by because it's so compact and it's also made out of metal and sometimes those things lead to a lot of handling noise being picked up. But this doesn't have that problem at all. Let's put it on a tabletop stand. And so now I've got the profile microphone on a tabletop stand. You can kind of hear if I pick up the stand and move it around, you can't hear anything. There's no noise you can't stand. If I tap this, that's what it sounds like. Tap the table, leave positive comments. Genuinely impressed at the level of handling noise rejection 
that this microphone has. It's pretty phenomenal, especially compared to other USB microphones that I've tried. And on top of handling noise, let's talk a little bit about distance, because as I mentioned earlier, right now I am pretty darn close to the microphone. This is a close proximity, and as with most microphones, the closer you are to it, the better things sound. But it's not always convenient to have a microphone this far, so maybe you need to have your microphone positioned a little further away. This is now what the microphone sounds like way further away than I would ever position it. Personally, this is about one and a half feet, half a meter away from, from my mouth where it would normally be. And this is what that sounds like. I'm still genuinely pretty impressed with how well it's picking up my voice. I did increase the gain a little bit. You can definitely hear a lot more of the room reverb and a lot more of the sound of the space that I'm in, but you can still hear my voice pretty clearly. And then of course, if we go back to being pretty close to the microphone, now we get a much more isolated sound that, you know, is just preferable to the big reverby room sound. Of course, a lot of that will depend on the space where you're at using the microphone. Right now, it's actually very quiet here for once, which is unusual because typically when I press the record button on anything, that is just a cue for like road construction and crazy noise and airplanes to fly overhead. Basically, every source of noise you can think of to happen all at once is usually what happens when I press record. But right now, it's pretty quiet. Let's change that, though, with my patented scientific dryer sound test which means I'm just gonna go across the hall, turn on the dryer, and hear what that sounds like. So this is an ideal situation where I'm in a relatively well-treated space, doors are closed, there's no outside sound, and this is now with an open door and a running dryer probably nine feet, three meters away from me, which is um, something I would not normally want to have happening while I'm recording any kind of audio. But if you're somebody who needs to use a microphone in a less than ideally sound treated environment, maybe you don't have a dedicated room, but you're sort of in like the corner of a common area, kitchen, dining room, living room, that sort of thing, shared room, office, this is an idea of how the profile handles background noise in your environment with the dryer turned on. You can definitely hear the dryer, but once again, especially as a condenser microphone, I am pretty impressed with how well it it does not pick up all the other sound. This does have a cardioid pickup pattern, so as soon as we realize that, we can then play with the strengths of the microphone and try to position it where the sound source is sort of coming in from angles that aren't going to be picked up by that cardioid pickup pattern. So essentially, things on the side are gonna get blocked out the most. If I go to the side of the microphone, you can hear my voice fade and then come back as I go to the front. If I go over here, you can hear it fade. As I go back, it would've been easier if I turned the microphone instead of trying to turn my head but that's okay. I'm gonna go turn off the dryer. Our dryer is still running, so I better go catch it. Now it is important to mention, as much as I've been talking about the simplicity of the Profile microphone, you can still use it with every bit of software that you would normally use. If you wanna run it through a DAW like Logic or Audition or Audacity, if you have the audacity to do that, if you wanna use this with Teams, OBS, Zoom, Ecamm, any, any of the software you would normally use, an interface or a USB microphone, you can run this audio through there, which would still give you the option to add some EQ and effects and all that stuff to the sound signal if you want to, but you don't have to, and that's the thing that I really love about this setup. When it comes to USB microphones, for me, one of my favorite things to keep in mind is how easy it is to recommend to somebody, because I know there are always people out there who are just interested in everything and have no problem tinkering and fiddling and playing with stuff, but I always try to keep in mind something I can recommend to someone and feel confident that they will get it, it will work really well for them, and it's not going to give them any issues, and that's where the simplicity of the profile really comes into play. You're getting an awesome sounding Sennheiser microphone at a very reasonable price that you don't have to do anything with other than maybe turn a little bit of these very satisfying to turn knobs right here, and then you've got great sounding audio. There's definitely something to be said for simplicity, and I always appreciate things that are just solid and reliable. And speaking of things that are solid and reliable, thank you to everyone who helps support my channel through Patreon and YouTube channel memberships. And again, it has been really fun to work with Sennheiser to get more than 100 of these microphones sent out around the world. There are all kinds of situations where a simple USB microphone can be really handy. I say that as a former high school digital media teacher where I know the importance of having tools that not only work well, but can stand up to the use and sometimes abuse from students. And as nice as it is with a sponsored partnership like this to be able to pay some of my own bills and keep my channel running, I really appreciate that Sennheiser went along with my kind of wacky idea to get these microphones into the hands of lots of people who will use them and appreciate them and just have a ton of fun with them. I guess you could say I'm glad they thought it sounded like a good idea.